the city was first mentioned in the 11th century as a fortified town by Duke Gira. It was still only a small village when Mathieu, Prince of Loti, made it his capital in 1153. Nancy only became a real town several hundred years later, in 1265. The city had its heyday during the reign of Stanislas Leszczynski, Duke of Lorraine, between 1738 and 1766. Just as the Prince of Lochi had done several centuries earlier, Stanislas also made it his capital. He founded the Royal Library and the Royal Society of Sciences and Belles Lettres, or the Academia Stanislav, as it is called today. He gave the city of Nancier several beautiful buildings. He had palaces, churches, and town gates built. And we have him to thank for the three marvelous squares that were made part of the World Heritage List. The largest and most imposing of the three squares is Plaza Stanislas, world famous for its gilded wrought iron gates. According to legend, the Duke wanted to erect a statue in honor of his son-in-law, Louis XV, but he couldn't find a place suitable for this enoncier. So came the idea to create the public space known colloquially as Stan Square. The other purpose of the square is to connect the old city and the new city, which were until then separated by the huge promenade running between them. The 125 meter long and 106 meter wide square is paved with light ochre stones with two lines of darker stones forming a diagonal cross motif. The square is surrounded by an architecturally harmonious ensemble of classicist buildings. The marvelous building of the Hotel de Ville occupies the entire south side of the square. The gable above the main entrance is decorated with the crest of Stanislas I and the city of Nancier. The wrought iron balustrade on the main staircase and the balcony across its main facade were created by Jean Lamour. The east side of the square is occupied by the Grand Hotel and the Opera, which was formerly the Bishop's Palace. On the west side, we can see the Pavillon Jouquet and the Fine Arts Museum, which was originally the College of Medicine. On the north side, the buildings were kept lower for defensive purposes. The royal architect called this area Bas Fasse. The passageway between the Vautement and Ossonville bastions can still be seen today. The four corners and west and east sides of the square feature gilded wrought iron gates and lanterns, also created by Jean Lamour. The ornate railing is not only a perfect example of French Rococo, but also the most beautiful piece of French metalwork. In the beginning, a bronze statue of Louis XV in the uniform of a Roman general, the work of Bartholomew Dubal and Paul Louis Soufflé, decorated the center of the square until the French Revolution and was replaced by a simple winged figure. The square was also renamed Place de Peuple and later Place Napoleon. The northwest and northeast corners feature the ornate Amphitrite and Neptune fountains, both designed by Bartholomew Dubal. 
The wrought iron decorations deserve special attention, not only for their beauty, but also for their size. 15.5 meters wide at the bottom, 24 meters wide at the top, and with a height of more than 10 meters. The blacksmith, Jean Lemur, writes in his book all the features, the bodies, the base, the platform, the figures on the pillars, the main capital, the architraves, the friezes, the molding, the narrow decorations at the tops, the background figures, the gates, the hollows and the decorations of the arch are all made of wrought iron. The tin covering fits the framework as if melted together. The angles of the mouldings and other profiles fit together with such precision as if they weren't made of wrought iron. The joints and crevices cannot be seen at all. The triumphal arch looming in the middle of the fourth side of the square was built in the 1750s to honor Louis XV. Walking through it, we come to the Plaza de la Carrière, where tournaments and other events used to be held. The main axis of the square is formed by a double boulevard with beautiful trees and buildings on both sides. These buildings were originally hotels in the 16th century, and their facades were changed to match those popular during the reign of Louis XV. Erie made good use of the place. He raised a new palace in the place of the old one, which later became the governor's palace. The courts of law also stand on the square. Its building was previously a hotel and stock exchange. The governor's palace joins the side buildings in a semicircle, giving the Plaza de Carrière its characteristic look. In the end, the monument placed in the middle of the square wasn't the old one that was originally meant to go there. The pyramid-shaped fountain to honor the victories of Louis XV was already operating in 1756 when the Austrian-French pact was signed. The wooden railings in the middle of the square, built for former tournaments, were replaced by a low wall that completely encircles the square. The four fountains in the four corners are the work of Migny and Lupi. Protective gladiators and sphinxes stood on the north and south sides of the square, later replaced by Lamour's wrought iron fences and gates to complement the style of Place Stanislav. The Plaza d'Alliance, or the Alliance Square, received its name after the aforementioned Austrian-French Pact. Originally, the plan was to call the square St. Stanislas Square, but this was changed in light of historical events. Erie designed a more discreet group of buildings for the square, whose splendor was no match for that of Place Stanislas. The houses surrounding the small rectangular palace all have exactly the same facade. The architect built his own hotel on the square, which he sold in 1757. Later, in 1763, he planted a double row of linden trees around the semicircular fountain to honor Louis XV. The Baroque fountains, fitting perfectly into the style of the square, were created by Souffli and Hubal based on the Fountain of the Four Rivers in the famous Piazza Navona. The three old men sitting on rocks symbolize the rivers and hold water-spouting urns. They support the ledge of a marble obelisk with the allegoric trumpeting figure on top. The sign on his shield reads, An Alliance Forever, 1756.
The three squares, planned with precision and diverse even in their symmetry, were unique in Europe at the time. The buildings and decorations are still extraordinary even today, and have lost nothing of their original beauty since they were built. Due to this, they impress today's tourists just as much as they did the inhabitants two and a half centuries ago. Placing these squares on the UNESCO World Heritage List ensures their preservation for future generations.